I'm not eating that. I'm not eating that. Welcome to Your Food Looks Funny, the show where we talk about all things related to picky eating, things we like, things we don't like, eating habits, those sort of things. So if you haven't been here before, just trying to give a brief synopsis of, you know, kind of what we go through. Uh, I am your host, Marcus T. And today we're going to be getting into uh, a topic that deals specifically with picky eating. Now, I haven't kind of dived back into the particulars of a picky eater since like episode one where I talked about texture issues. So today we're going to talk about a different type of picky eater. Today we're going to be talking about the person who can't let their food touch. So not just texture issues. But when food actually touches on a plate, so too many merging ingredients, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the understanding of what's going on here from a child's perspective all the way to an adult perspective. I want you guys to call in after you hear this episode, after you've listened all the way through, get all the information that I had to say, call in or text the show at 419-77-PICKY or 419-777-4259 to let me know if you are or if you know or have a child that's one of these that, you know, don't like their food touching, need everything separated inch by inch. Let me know how you deal with it. Was it a thing that you always had going on? Was it a thing that the child always had going on? Did it develop over time? You know, is the, do you know the root of the cause? And that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about today. So I don't have much science behind it, but I do have some opinions. Like, like everybody knows, my wife is the inspiration to most of these shows. This is one of her things. She does not like her food touching. And on that note, I, I have to keep that in consideration, but I also try to push her boundaries most of the times. And I don't know how that goes with other relationships. If, if your significant other has that same kind of thing going on or if you have children that have to have food separated I know a lot of to-go containers and you know plates that you can buy have separated segments in order to serve food in but do you use them you know are you more adverse to separating food when you can just make one beautiful cohesive dish that just blends well together we'll talk about that Right now. So blending foods together, most modern dishes nowadays don't fall into the same category that they used to 15, 20 years ago, where they had to have a meat or protein, a starch and a vegetable. Now you'll see dishes that don't include a starch sometimes, or maybe they don't include a vegetable, or maybe they'll create some sort of hybrid side dish that incorporates both to go with a protein that might not necessarily be a meat. You know, veganism and vegetarianism are big things nowadays. There are so many different kinds of diets that the combinations of food that can be put together and the flavor profiles that can be married together are so different. They vary so much. So a lot of chefs, including myself, will purposely pair things that you have to eat Together, You have to take that perfect bite. As I've said before, you get a little bit of everything. Everything ties into each other. So the flavor of the starch and the flavor of the vegetable play off of the protein. And again, it doesn't have to be a meat. It doesn't have to be something that pairs well with pork or beef or chicken. Maybe you have mushrooms. Maybe you have some sort of bean or lentil. That's your main component of the heartier piece of the dish but the fact that you separate them or to even more of an extreme only eat one item at a time as in you eat one until it's finished and then you eat another until it's finished and you work your way around the plate my wife I think actually takes a a clock approach to it she might even go clockwise around it don't quote me on that I don't pay attention that much I'm too busy eating my own plate but Eating one item at a time and having them separated can ultimately deter you from rating the dish higher 
if you would have eaten it all together or at least incorporated bites together. Certain sauces, when poured on things, I'll see her, you know, making sure they're not bleeding into the next thing. Like if I make a, a chicken dish that has a sauce that's a little looser, maybe it runs towards the rice or the potato. It can't be mashed potatoes because I'm not eating that. We know she ain't eating those. But if it bleeds over, it 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 might be one of those things that you you're just like, ugh, ugh, yuck. And I don't remember if I was ever like that as a kid because I was very selective with certain items I would eat. So if certain items were on a plate, like a raw tomato or a salad, like, no. If I had a salad, it had to be more meat and cheese than anything. And like the the lettuce, oh my God. The lettuce, disgusting. Disgusting. I'm fine with lettuce now and I'm fine with a good salad now. But back then, that was like my ultimate, I don't want to eat that. I don't. But salad is one of those all-encompassing dishes where the ingredients have to marry together. And my wife eats salad. I mean, obviously, there are certain things that she doesn't eat in her salad. Like, she's not a big fan of having different kinds of fruit in her salad. So when we try to put apples or sometimes different types of dried fruit, she doesn't like them. But she eats salad. She's not a big fan of things like casserole. How do you guys feel about casseroles or lasagna? Because these are, I'm going back and forth between things that she will and will not eat. She'll eat lasagna, but there are certain types of casseroles that she won't eat. I like making shepherd's pie a lot. It's basically, you know, a type of casserole. She doesn't eat it. And it kind of due to the fact that it has a layer of mashed potatoes on the top too, but I love them. I love mashed potatoes. I love shepherd's pie. But getting her to eat a few of these things is uh, a little tricky. You got to be selective about how many things I throw on top of each other. And that's where I started this with is a modern dish nowadays is geared towards merging flavors, blending, making sure things pair well with each other. Food pairing is a big deal. Gastro pubs, they, they, they make their sale off of the combination of flavors and the the changes that one food will make to another food's flavor. It's almost like what high-end restaurants do with wine pairings for food. The wine and the food play off of each other, and one accentuates the flavor of the other when paired correctly. So with dishes, people have done this. Even You don't have to be a wine drinker in order for flavors to marry together well. So always be considerate. Of the person who doesn't like their food touching. But those same people need to hear me when I say that certain foods need to be eaten together in order to get the best out of the dish. I've said this before also on episodes that when you order food at a restaurant, if you can't order it the way that it's uh, set up on the menu, other than an allergy, if you have some kind of allergy or something, I understand. But that should also lead you towards another dish that you can eat as a whole. Now, if you're eating at a fast food restaurant or something and you just want to take the lettuce and tomato off, you know, so be it. But most mid-level to high-end restaurants made a dish specifically to be one type of recipe. And that's why a lot of high-end restaurants will not allow uh, exceptions or adjustments to certain dishes because it completely changes the dish. You can't expect the dish to be good or great when you alter it and then blame it on the restaurant. It's not the restaurant's fault that you don't like mushrooms or you're, you don't like onions. Again, we're not talking about allergies. We're just talking about what you don't like because I had a phase going into culinary school where I had to adjust my way of thinking about food because I told a chef, no, actually I didn't tell a chef. Let me not say that. I didn't tell a chef I didn't like something. I just, I tried to alter it. I tried to alter it from the recipe that was given to me. And I didn't like it. And I realized after he explained over the next week, you know, why certain flavors marry together well. And what different 
things do to your dish when you make it or different sauces that have to cook for longer periods of time so that the flavors can develop and become more complex. What I was doing to the dish by taking out certain elements or adding my own what I thought was going to make it better. And I did an episode called The Recipe for Success, and it was how to follow a recipe, and especially when you find a new one. When you find a new recipe, you want to follow it the way that it says at least the first time, if not the first couple of times. You want to read all the way through the recipe, and you want to do it as close to the directions as possible. Not altering any ingredients, because I know... I used to be one of those people who would add in what I thought was going to make it taste better before I had even had it before. Before I had even had it before. Come on. So what's the point of me getting their recipe and altering it before I even try it their way? Because I think I know better than this person. So what was the point of me referencing their recipe if I was going to alter it in the first place? Sounds counterintuitive, right? So now I just do the recipe as is, as hard as I as hard as I try to alter it, sometimes I just have to be like, no, just do the recipe as is. I made some bread pudding recently, and when I read the recipe, I had done a bread pudding that was very similar. So I felt comfortable going off the recipe. So I went off the recipe a little bit. I changed a couple of things, and it still came out good. But when it it's hard to get food to taste perfect. If you... If you can say that a lot of foods that you've tasted were perfect, then you have to have those critical moments. You have to have those critical moments. You don't have to tear somebody's dish down. You don't have to tear your own food down because I'm I'm guilty of that all the time. I will over overly judge my own food just to think "Uh, I could have done that better and I could have done this better. But I would rather it be. I could do this better if I just changed this, this, and this after I've made the dish the way that it was supposed to be made the first time. Because when I went off of this bread pudding recipe from its original, now anything that I scrutinize is my fault because I feel like I changed it. And this was a long rant for me to say, eat things the way they should be eaten according to how they were prepared person that prepared them didn't have to be a chef, but maybe they wanted you to taste some item with the sauce. Because we all know we'll have that person that gets the thought, oh, I don't want the sauce. And then they try it and they'd be like, oh, this is dry. Well, guess what? It was supposed to come with sauce. Come on. So because you chose to eat it dry, no, you don't get a sip of water. Suck it up. Don't take a swig now. The sauce was supposed to be on it. I put all kinds of butters and stuff in that sauce to moisten that protein or whatever item you just had that I just (laughs) imagined or made up right there. But the point is, expand. Take one complete bite. One complete bite. That's my challenge for you. The next time you get a dish, to all those who have to eat their food separated. Okay? Take one complete bite of everything together. Mix it together. Mix it together. Try it all in one bite. And then after you finish that bite, you ain't done. You got to try it again. So don't think you was getting off that easy because people will fight through that one bite and then give it up. And the only person there to govern you is yourself. Don't let somebody sit there and try to pressure you into it. And the same goes for those who are trying to feed their kids who have the same issue. You don't have to pressure them, but don't give up on the dish or don't give up trying just because they didn't want it once or twice or whatever. It doesn't have to be a hold them down and you going to eat this. But, you know, I've seen good results. And again, I don't have kids, but I do have younger siblings who are young enough to be my kids. And I got to see their eating habits from more of an adult perspective. So watching them eat, I realized my dad, who got really soft as he got older, because he would have sat there and forced me to eat it. But. Once they came around, he had softened up a little bit and they could get away with a few other things. But his approach seemed to work a little bit better from what I saw. Letting them try and then letting them walk away when they felt like it. Okay, But he didn't stop presenting it it to them because he wanted to eat it. So it's like if you see the parent eating it and they're enjoying it, well, maybe the kid will eventually come around. 
Because as I've said before, your taste buds are developing all the time. Whether they're in, in whether they're at their peak as a kid or whether they're decreasing and changing your palate as you get older, you're losing taste buds as you get older. You're losing the sensation that you originally had. So a three, four, five year old has extreme taste. Maybe they like plain taste. Okay. But that's a topic for another show that I'll do. But I want you, the picky eater who needs things separated, who has to have a wall between each item, who needs the segmented plate, the old school cafeteria style separated section plate. That's still a little bit of out of, out of date because I think half the plate or at least a third of it was set up for protein. And of course, regulations for health keep changing that. But this ain't about health. This is about taste. This is about flavor blending. This is about that gravy that runs from the top of your steak over to your rice. And you look at it like, nah, we need a little segregation there. Nothing wrong with a little food segregation here and there. Okay. But don't be afraid to marry those flavors, to blend them together, to mix them together. Get that one complete bite. Before I get out of here, I'll tell you a story about recently feeding my wife. We had some HelloFresh meals. And again, if you haven't tried HelloFresh before, Go to yourfoodlooksfunny.com. On the home page, we have uh, a post on there that can get you a discount. I think it's $70 off when you sign up for HelloFresh. Click that link, and you can go there and try that out. But we tried HelloFresh, this one particular meal that had mashed sweet potatoes. And again, she don't like mashed potatoes, even if they sweet potatoes. But it came with roasted Brussels sprouts, and she loves Brussels sprouts. So they played well together. I actually took some creative liberties and added some peach balsamic vinegar with some bacon to the Brussels sprouts. Made them even better. Okay. This plays well. The acid with the sweetness of the potatoes. Okay. Good flavor blend. Like I was saying, these things are made to be eaten together. So because she was so adverse to eating the mashed sweet potatoes, I said, well, why don't you mix a little bit of those Brussels sprouts in with the sweet potatoes. And of course, her response was, I'm not eating that. But she did end up trying it. Did she like it? No. But did she try it? Yes. But it was my way of getting her to add some texture. Again, episode one, texture issues. If you haven't heard that one, you need to go all the way back to the beginning. That came out almost exactly a year ago, July 8th. Add a little texture by mixing some ingredients. If you have texture issues, and you don't like your food touching? <sighs> well, you need to go back and listen to all 52 episodes and see if you can uh, figure out something else before that. But anywho, thank you for listening anyway. Appreciate you listening. Come back next week. Check out to see what we got going for that. We might talk about another picky eating habit. Uh, eating bland food or people that don't like overly uh, tasty stuff. Stuff that has too bold of a flavor, too strong of a flavor. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. But come back next week. Check us out on Instagram, YFLF Podcast. Call the show. Number will come up at the end again. See you guys next week. All right. Make sure you're following us on Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to Your Food Looks Funny. And call or text or reach out to the show and let us know what you think at 419-77-PICKY or 419 777 4259.